Graduation is a huge milestone for me, but I didn't always know that I was going to get there because of my health. I've had a lot of things that I've had to deal with, but still, I wasn't going to let it defeat me. I wasn't going to let it defy me. Yes, I have this disease and this condition, but I'm not the disease or the condition. When the doctors told us that uh, we don't think she'll ever be able to walk or she'll ever be able to talk, she has always surpassed what they thought she would do. Love you! Love you too, honey bunches! <laughs> <laughs> she is lively, full of energy. She's always been extremely goal-driven from day one when, when we would say, Brittany, you can't do that, and Brittany would prove us wrong. She taught me you don't complain, you do the best you can, and you keep on going. She's always been a fighter. I was born in 1993, and they noticed that something was wrong with me right from birth. We went through genetics, neurology. You know, they ran every test that they could. Her lungs collapse, something goes wrong with her heart, and Brittany has to be in ICU. She would get pneumonia. Well, a couple of times, she had double pneumonia. She was starting to have a curve in her spine. I've had a number of very scary diagnoses, but eventually they came up with a mitochondria disorder. Now with the mitochondrial diagnosis, her prognosis wasn't very good. You know, eventually organ systems and things start shutting down. But she's never been one to let anything stop her. Although she was sick, just recently in the hospital, she was doing college work, you know, at the hospital. Brittany has a condition, but for a while, I didn't see it in her. She just likes to work on her own, do stuff on her own, because she knows she can do it, she has the strength to do it. Some people might say, you can't do it, that'll only make her push farther. Brittany's positive attitude comes from the whole family as a whole, because they never treated her as if she couldn't, you know, even in classwork. I've been very academically motivated. She was able to talk me into letting her go away to college. But when she came home after that first semester, she couldn't get out of bed. I mean, the color ran out of her skin. One day she just said, she said, Mom, she said, I really felt like I was dying. And I didn't want to admit it, but I was afraid she was too. So that's when she called Mayo, and Mayo pretty much started from ground zero. I mean, the best experience in our life, from the doctors to the receptionists to the technicians drawing her blood, doing x-rays. I mean, phenomenal, especially with her respiratory problems. The doctor realized that the machine she was on was working against her and told us to try this new machine. After two nights of being on that machine, all her color came back. I mean, she felt like a totally different person. Well, in the meantime, my doctors are questioning my diagnosis. Now, my neurologist says, well, I don't think you have a mitochondria disease. The doctors at Mayo finally gave us her real true diagnosis, which is RYR1 myopathy, a rare disease. But, you know, it's not fatal. So here I am for all this time. I'm thinking I have a disease that wasn't what I had at all. And that gave everybody hope. And that was the first time that it seemed like it was a little relief. Right now, there's no treatments and there's no cures, but I'm only 22 years old. Medicine is constantly evolving. As a matter of fact, I'm participating in a clinical trial, and they're hoping to come up with a treatment for this RLI almond myopathy. Brittany C. Sybin. She did it. She got her associate's degree. We are so proud of her because just three weeks ago, she was in the hospital and she was studying and she was writing papers in from the hospital bed. That's just how determined she is. I'm excited about the future.
because I have a future.